as promised, the newspaper front pages, and we'll start with the Sunday Times redesigned today, leading with Miliband's 50p tax, Stokes Fury, it says, and Hollande and Trivala Le Split on the front page there as well. The Observer again, uh, C'est Fini is their take on the Hollande story. And they've got a story about Tony Blair saying that the wars of the current century are caused by religious extremism. I don't know what we say about that, really. But there we go. Thanks, Tony, for that. Um, the Independent on Sunday has a wonderful line in what I might call oblique headlines. Beat the big six. Make your own energy. How we're supposed to become our own wind farms, it doesn't explain on the front page. You have to buy it to find out. We're about to do it, aren't we're, we? We're about to do it. <laughs> Lots of hot air will be. Um, and the Sunday Telegraph, IRA victims plan to sue Tony Blair. He's having a busy day, clearly. And Labour city guru savages Ed Balls for 50p tax pledge. And again, the First Lady is fired. Everyone agrees, more or less, today. Um, the story about a, a Tory MP uh, dressing up as a Nazi, which we'll talk about on the Mail on Sunday. But that's basically it for the front pages. So over to the main stories. Martin, um, all the papers have covered Kiev. You have very uh, decently not chosen your own paper to, to start with. Yes, I've uh, picked the Independent on Sunday, Andrew, and uh, with the headline, Keith Brace uh, for Renewed Crackdown. Um, it presents uh, Fleet Street uh, with a number of problems, um, Ukraine. To, to many of our readers, it's a, a sort of far-off country of which they know little. Uh, but to William Haig, uh, your guest today, and... and uh, leaders in Europe. It's, it's actually on the fault line between East and West. Absolutely. Bigger and than France. Bigger than country. France yeah. and an extraordinary history, a terrible history of, of famine, of rape by the, the great totalitarian powers of the 20th century and wrestled uh, between East and West. Mm. And the, uh, the showdown goes on in a, in, a, in a way that is very, very dangerous. Mm. And, and, and we'll, be, we'll talk about that with uh, William Haig, but of course one of the issues that's come up in the last few days is the number of far-right groups behind yeah. these protests. It's not a kind of cuddly, democratic, liberal um, opposition versus a bad dictator. It's much more complicated than that, isn't it? Well, uh, I, I'm sure there is a, 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 a far-right interest. There have always been uh, an unpleasant nationalist uh, uh, fringe in the Ukraine uh, that's been anti-Semitic uh, from of old. But if you go back in the history of the recent history of the country to the Orange uh, Revolution, um, it's much more, I think, a, a wrestling match between the, the destiny, those who see the destiny of the country to the east and those to the west, um, coupled with, I think, a, a terrible problem of corruption at the top. Yes. That, that, it, that I mean, its most famous novelist, Andrew Kirchhoff, in Death and the Penguin, I think, gives a very good description, a marvellous description. He's a great writer. He's a great I mean, writer, Kelko. Well, when I was in Russia last week, it's very interesting to the Russian journalists. They all say, but the Ukraine is Russia, basically. Mm -hmm. It's where Russia starts. It's where Rus began. It's the Orthodox Church. It's, it's, it's us. They don't even say in the Ukraine. They say on the edge. Right. Yeah. Wow. It means on the edge of Russia for them. Yeah. Now, Shami, speaking of on the edge, another country on the edge. Yes. Um, Siri, you've chosen from the Sunday Times. Well, like, I can do this, of course, Martha. Like, I, can, I can go to the Sunday Times. And of, co no, but, and of course, the, the, the great modern tradition mm. of great women, intrepid foreign correspondence in your paper continues. The late, great Marie Colvin is, um, is succeeded by um, Christina Lam, I think, in Afghanistan. And, and today we're looking at Hala Jabba, who, who writes about Syria, wh where the heartbreak um, and the turmoil continues. Um, I hope you're going to ask the Foreign Secretary about um, refugees I from think Syria. I'll get to that, don't worry. Because, of course, we, you know, we, we, our hearts go out to people when they're suffering over there. When they turn up over here, they don't always get the... Um, the warm welcome. The same, the, the, yeah, the mm. same reception. Um, but, but Hala writes a, a, a really poignant piece um, about her experience in Syria and how um, a young mother urged her to save her little girl. Really interesting piece about what it is to be a journalist and what the, what the boundaries are when you're, when you're watching and you're yeah. recording this horror, but to what extent should you, do you intervene? Um, I think I find that very difficult yeah. as, a, as a human rights campaigner I, I, rather than a journalist. Now, I read, Martin, I'm sure it's been exaggerated somewhere that um, these great foreign correspondents now have to go in easy jet and take tents with them. Is that true? <laughs> Cost-cutting measures? Well, <laughs> um, we, we always do. Uh, we, we, we're not in the luxury class anymore. This is not, this is not the days of... Uh, uh, Evelyn Moore's boots, where you yeah. can take your, you know, your cricket chest, and uh, mm -hmm. and, and, um, uh, and we 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 have a uh, and, and a har and a hamper from Harrods. Um, but yes, no, I, I saw the uh, the story too. Yeah. But there yeah, we. We, we, tr we, we try to get the your best value for your money. Your frugal <laughs> value for money, people. And when I said that the, the Sunday Times has been redesigned, mm -hmm. um, 
what's your sort of message to the readers who are wondering why it's redesigned? What are you trying to achieve? Well, uh, for a greater clarity, a rather more modern look, we have a new typeface called Solido. Um, we have, um, we've changed the formatting too of both the uh, Culture and mm. uh, Sunday yeah, Times okay. magazine. Right. A little bit more excitement, I think. Okay. So let, let's turn to the next story. We've done civil war in Syria. You're moving briskly to civil war in the Labour Party in the Mail on Sunday, I think. Well, is. so it says. Um, I, I'm not sure that, that it, it implies, I suppose, that um, former Blairites are, um, are very cross at the, uh, at the way. Uh, no, Balls a, a lot of anonymous around. quotes there. I know. A lot of very many other. names. The the city minister, it is true, um, uh, uh, a former city minister, uh, Lord Miners, has been uh, on has gone on the record uh, attacking the the, the Rays, as has um, uh, um, a donor, Lord uh, Gulam Noon, who I think has given almost three quarters of a million to the party. And says, he's the man we call Curry King. The Curry Gulam King. Noon. Yes, there's been a Curry King, and and there's uh, a, an electronics tycoon have all said this is this is the end as far as they're concerned. Right. Um, but there's a lot of coverage, of course, of this 50p uh, tax rate um, across the press, and I think it's fair to say not universally warmly approved by the press generally this morning. No, no, it's, it's, getting, it's getting a b uh, very bad review. In, I noticed that, um, I mean, obviously economics isn't my thing, but I noticed in the Mail on Sunday piece that there's lots of reference to yeah. friends of Blair. Mr Blair has been busy on Iraq, has been busy on telling us about religion it's a full job and apparently he, apparently he's he and his friends are particularly upset about um, about mr. Ball's um, new policy so I mean I think it must be tough to be Ed Miliband actually with all these these various coffins that need nailing down and you're you know trying to do your job the undead it. rising yeah. indeed well, the, the question I mean I must admit, I'd love to ask Ed uh, this morning would be you know do you think labor can win without any business support does a hostile business community... I'll write that down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write that one down as well. Thank you very much indeed, Martin. Um, now, in terms of kind of embarrassment from the past, we, we mustn't completely ignore the Renard story, which has bored us all to death this week. Um, sorry. Well, the new, the new, the new twist, um, it's, I think it's in your paper uh, again, um, Martin, you're not sparing any Lib Dem um, blushes today, that's for sure, is that, and it's friends of again, is this, the, is, this, is this political <laughs> journalistic like thing? Oh, nice do like, they're, ne they're never the person who's named, it's their <laughs> friends. Uh, apparently friends of Lord Renard are suggesting that if he gets further investigated, um, he knows where the bodies are buried from previous um, uh, scandals going for many years and he would be loath, it's suggested that he'd be loath to, um, to spill the beans, but uh, he, mi he, might, he might do so <laughs> if provoked. I mean, that's pretty, pretty um, tawdry stuff, isn't it? Um, Friends of Andrew Marr would like to make it clear that I don't think the story itself is boring, it's just that it's gone nowhere all week. It's just sure. been but pretty, I think pretty, a pretty big headache if you're, right. if you're Nick Clegg right now when you're trying to make speeches in Davos about right. economics and so on. But anyway, there we go. Their but travails continue. They might say with Lib Dem friends like that, who needs enemies? <laughs> Indeed. You what, might what wandering hands in London and wandering presidents in Paris, Martin? Yes, well, the, uh, the Allende uh, story is the gift that gives on giving. It keeps on giving to, to us all. Um, the, uh, it's, it's a marvellous international soap opera, um, mm. uh, but it, it seems to be coming at least to a halt, if not to an end. I don't know um, why people bother with these kind of official titles of first lady and first whatever. Well, I think but, but I think, I mean, you've picked the, the, the Mail on Sunday, yeah. um, um, Martin, and I think it is actually quite an interesting piece of newspaper craft that in what looks like a double spread on sex at the Elysee yeah. pa um, Palace, you've actually got um, is it Alistair Heath um, writing the best part of the page where he says, never mind the sex. Um, it's Ed's romance with Gallic finances that we should truly fear. So he actually squeezes a sort well, of economic yeah. story into a double into, spread. Into a double that's about, which, which you're like, lured in, you suddenly find yourself yeah, reading about like the French the French It's like the vegetables in the, in the <laughs> tomato pasta sauce for the, sort of, for the punters. I think that's yeah. quite clever. Yeah. Genius. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, so we move briskly on. I've finally seen Benefit Street. I thought it was rather a moving and well-made documentary. Well, not, I don't want to talk about Benefit. I, I don't want to talk about Benefit Street. No, no, I want to talk about Refugee. You again. talk about what you want to talk about, thank, Tally. Please. Thank you so much. I don't it's that mean kind to, of programme. But it's your, but you're, you know, no, no, you're no. my host. But, but, but yes, there is a story about, guess. about, thank you, about Benefit Street. But, but also, it's being suggested. Um, Mark Townsend writes a, a, a piece in the Observer that the Home Office, because of the great fury about immigration, you know how the '97 mm -hmm. election was mm -hmm. supposed to be immigration, uh, sorry, education, mm -hmm. education, education. It looks like 2015 might be all about immigration. Very, very toxic. Uh, debate and it's looking it's being suggested in the observer 
by lawyers and refugee charities that the good old Home Office and Borders Agency are going for the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to removals. And it's been suggested that they are targeting in particular torture victims and people with um, mental health problems as the easiest to deport, which seems to me to be completely perverse when you'd imagine that it's the most vulnerable who, who, who ought to be getting asylum. There's a story here of a, a man who, who says he was tortured in Pakistan, who's uh, was removed despite the interventions of the Red Cross and others without even a psychiatric assessment. Now, if that, in the summer, we had the, um, the Home Office hiring vans to drive around um, parts of the country where there's high ethnic uh, population telling people to go. Yeah, so I hope that they're part. And now the suggestion that they're going for the most vulnerable. Um, that's not my idea of um, fair or firm immigration control. And Martin, talking about emigration, the ultimate emigration to space, you've got front page of uh, your news review, Richard Branson's trying to make it commercially possible to go into space, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, he's got his, had, had this rather sort of serial uh, comic uh, uh, campaign to do the first sort of passenger uh, airline service in space. And, and in fact, he was even boasting last year that he'd be up for, by Christmas Day wearing a Santa suit in rather sort of typical flamboyant Branson style. Yeah. Uh, but every deadline seems to come and every de deadline seems to pass. And yeah. Mr. And you've, Sir Richard you've, you've, is... It looks a bit like gravity, that film there. He's, <laughs> he's doing his Sandra Bullock thing. But do you think it's going... The, the theme is that it's going, not going It's not going plan. very well. I mean, he's sunk right. uh, millions of his own money. A lot of investors have put, piled in. Um, it, it, it is an imaginative... He's one of our great cheer-uppers, though, isn't he? He is end, one Richard of our great cheer-uppers. I mean, I, he, it, I, I like seeing him draped in a... You know, Union Jack suit, even though perhaps now he's a taxile, ex ex exile. <laughs> but uh, he's, okay. he's that's a, a long way to <laughs> run to avoid tax. Isn't okay, it? now uh, a lighter story at the end. We've what? chosen you've what? chosen Justin Bieber. Well, light and not so light, actually. Quite quite sad, mm. I think. I mean, yes, poor old Justin Bieber. Um, says the bleeding heart liberal director of Liberty <laughs> has been. Um, his travails have been all over the news um, all week. Um, but it takes Barbara Ellen again in the Observer to say, just remember. People like Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber, for all their fame and success, they are just kids. Um, I think it was you that was telling me, Martin, that, that Justin Bieber is 19 years old um, and, you know, has been through a, a, a hell of a lot. And yes, you can say, oh, well, you know, he's got all the money and celebrity and so but on. He's but he's just a kid. He's just, he's just a kid in the end. Well, as, as, you know, speaking as the macho Sunday Times uh, editor, the, um, he's only doing what any red-blooded young man ha has been doing re since the days of James Dean and Rebel Without a Cause. I mean, mm. it's, a, yes. it's a great cliché of, of, of youth ever since youth culture was invented. But with so much <laughs> more scrutiny and exposure. More right. mm. we're, we're out of time now, but it's, uh, you're celebrating your own anniversary, I think, Shami. You're, is Liberty a teenager still? Um, yes, no, yes, we're nearly 80, which is practically a, practically a teenager oh, these days. Thank you very much. Happy that's birthday. coming up in a couple of weeks, and uh, that's when still the hunger, hunger march <laughs> is duffed up by the Metropolitan Police. That would never happen today. <laughs> and so the uh, National Council for Civil Liberties right. was born. Thanks, thanks to both of you very much indeed for that. And so, of course, to the weather...